Today's topic of discussion is vocal nodules. And this vocal nodules is the commonest cause of dysphonia in children. So in the next 10 to 15 minutes, I'll explain what is vocal nodule, what are the causes of vocal nodule, why the vocal nodules happen in uh, particular individuals and not in everyone, and also uh, how to diagnose a vocal nodule and what is the treatment of vocal nodule. It is very important uh, in clinical practice, very common in clinical practice, and also usually asked as short notes and also uh, kept as short case for postgraduate practical examination. Uh, definition This is defined as a non neoplastic uh, vocal fold mucosal disorder. This uh, on the free border of the vocal cords, true vocal cords, and it is a non neoplastic disorder, and uh, the others being uh, vocal cord polyp, then contact. Uh, ulcers or intubation randomness, all these are coming under the category of these non-neoplastic vocal fold mucosal disorders. Okay, and this is more commonly seen in children, school going uh, children and boys, in boys more, uh, more than in girls and in adult it is more common in females of less than 30 years of age and profession wise it is more commonly seen in um, teachers especially in uh, teachers of lower classes and also in preachers, in advocates uh, or in uh, singers who are not professionals okay, and uh, street vendors etc. Those who are using their uh, voice uh, misuse rather than overuse okay. So in voice misuse this uh, chance of this vocal nodule is more common. Second one is the etiology. Etiology of this vocal nodule. So this exact etiology is not known, but it is uh, thought to be uh, due to voice uh, abuse. Okay. And this voice abuse is a forced voice production due to strain in the uh, neck and in the shoulder region, and it causes a very harsh quality to the voice. And uh, it is typically uh, the causes are uh, talking on very loud voice for prolonged period of time, especially in a uh, background noise and also uh, singing and also shouting above the range of one's natural frequency and also due to uh, coughing and also repeated throat clearing. So in all these cases it causes a voice abuse. So in normal persons during phonation you know that this vocal force, this uh, vocal folds will abduct and adduct and also there is uh, variation in the subglottic pressure so that a normal voice will produce. So uh, I'll show you the stroboscopic uh, finding of norm during normal phonation and also in case of vocal nodule. Stroboscopy in normal people. This is how the vocal cord moves while you phonate in normally. Even in this you can see that the maximum point of contact is at the junction of anterior one third and posterior two third of the vocal cords. Here you can see bilateral vocal nodule that is on the free border of uh, true vocal cords at the junction of anterior one third and posterior two third. And uh, the stroboscopy in case of bilateral vocal nodule. So this repeated trauma in the mid membranous portion will lead to a localized thickening and also in epithelial swelling. So uh, it typically happens at the junction of uh, this anterior two third, anterior one third and posterior two third that is at the membranous vocal cords okay so that is a common site of a uh, formation of vocal nodule and usually these vocal nodules happens uh, bilaterally okay so uh, that is the basic cause of formation of this uh, vocal nodules that is the voice abuse and uh, as you have already seen, this exactly at this point there is maximum vibration of the uh, uh, vocal force. And also, uh, 
there is shearing force is also implied and there is a whiplash hypothesis. Okay, whiplash theory. This is also thought to be a cause of this vocal nodule. The other causes are psychological factors, uh, infections especially of uh, ear, uh, nose, throat and chest infections. Then allergy and also esophageal reflex. Uh, in these cases, there is more chance of a vocal nodule formation. And what is the pathology of this vocal nodule? In the pathology, uh, I already uh, told you that the area of maximum vibration of the vocal folds at the time of phronation is at the junction of anterior one third and the uh, posterior two third. Okay, that is on the uh, membranous vocal cords. So, uh, this wave pattern at the time of voice uh, abuse, this will come and strike and causes trauma. So, this repeated trauma will lead to a submucosal edema and hemorrhage, which in turn causes hyalinization and fibrosis of the and the overlying epithelium, the nodule formation occurs. So, that is how a vocal nodule, that is the pathology of vocal for, uh, nodule and the common site being at the junction of the uh, anterior one third and posterior two third of the free border of the vocal force. Okay. Now, what are the clinical features? Let us see what are the clinical features. So, uh, in the free border of the vocal folds, there is a there are nodules by on both sides at the junction of anterior one third and posterior two third. So, at the time of phonation, usually the vocal folds should come and abduct at a point, and there should not be any gap in between. If there is no vocal nodule. This should come and approximate in the midline. Okay, in normal cases. But when there is vocal nodules, what will happen? Because there is vocal nodules, uh, this will not... Because these vocal nodules are there, at this point there will be hindrance. So, it be, actually it will be like an hourglass shape. This uh, vocal folds will be out in the, of this shape. So there will be a phonetic gap at the time of phonation. So more air will uh, go through the uh, vocal folds. So what will happen when there is more air? So there is chance of dryness of the uh, vocal cords. Isn't it? So what happened? There will be, the voice will be hoarse. Actually it will be husky and also breathy voice. That is characteristic of vocal nodules. And in singers, usually the singers will complain of vocal fatigue and they won't be able to take high pitch. The singer will typically complain that I can't take high pitch notes. And when I try to take high pitch noise, the, the breaks are coming in the voice. And also vocal fatigue, breathy voice, roughness, harshness and there is increased effort for singing. And even, if, even though the... Uh, the singer avoids all this and it starts singing. What happens is there will be overactivity of the muscles of the neck. So, in the uh, towards the end of the day, there will be pain in the neck will happen. Okay. So, all these are the clinical features of the uh, complaints of the patient, which is husky and pretty voice. The, and it will progress if no treatment or the voice therapy is not taken. This, all this complaint will uh, progress and uh, the gold standard in the diagnosis of this uh, vocal nodule is video stroboscopy. We have already seen the video stroboscopic picture of patient. Even very minute uh, vocal nodules you can uh, pick in a video stroboscopy. Um, so usually they are bilateral seen on the free border of the vocal folds, less than 3 millimeters uh, in size in, uh, usually and it will increase in size. So to start with they are soft edematous swellings and if it increasing in a chronic cases they will become whitish or grayish in appearance and more the size will increase from a pinhead to a piece, uh, size of a pea.
Okay, so that is regarding the clinical features. And also investigations, I already told you, the typical clinical features along with the uh, laryngoscopy and also video stroboscopy will aid in the diagnosis of a vocal nodule. And what treatment will you give? So, coming to the treatment, the mainstay in the treatment is voice therapy. As these vocal nodules are more common in children and in uh, young adults, it is always better to go with the voice therapy and also uh, treat the precipitating factors. If there is allergy or there is uh, gastroesophageal uh, reflux disease, train that and uh, ask the patient to modify the uh, lifestyle. And uh, uh, voice therapy is mainly uh, to reduce the vocal strain. So any techniques which can uh, reduce the shouting habit, whispering, then or coughing or repeated throat clearing, all that techniques can be employed in voice therapy and uh, as the uh, patient is encouraged to use a very smooth, easy voice, easy tone of the voice. That is the mainstay of treatment. Okay. And if the patient is not improving with voice therapy for more than three months, look for chances of surgery. Okay. And in children, why we prefer voice therapy is that there is chance of scarring if we are going for an early surgery. So that is why the mainstay is always voice therapy and also a good vocal hygiene. Teach vocal hygiene. And if the patient is not improving, we can go with a micro laryngeal surgery. Okay, surgery is always do with a uh, microscope, either with cold instrument or you can use laser excision of the vocal nodule and uh, that is called the microlaryngeal surgery. Okay, and uh, always if you are going for surgery, the specimen should always be sent for histopathological examination also and even after the surgery, the patient should be uh, advised to continue with the voice therapy and also vocal hygiene. Using the correct tone of voice, avoiding uh, voice abuse uh, and uh, also overuse of voice and uh, repeated uh, frequent sips of warm fluids and to avoid uh, the uh, uh, reflux, gas, uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease and also any precipitating factors that should be avoided. There should be lifestyle modification and if these vocal nodules are associated with any um, Functional disorders, then psychological assessment and if, if needed, a psychotherapy has also uh, should be considered along with the treatment. So that is all about uh, vocal nodule. I told about the, the uh, synonyms that is vocal fold nodule or singers nodule and uh, the definition, then etiologies, then pathology, clinical features and in the treatment go for a voice therapy and if the patient is not Getting better with voice therapy, then only go for a microlaryngeal surgery. Okay, so that is all about uh, vocal nodule. Thank you.